welcome back to Folzor. Welcome back to the YouTube channel where we talk about computer architecture. I'm an electrical engineering student in university right now. And this is my accumulator CPU design. So I made a previous video talking about how I made this accumulator CPU, but I'm not gonna lie, it really wasn't optimal at all. It was my first design of making a CPU. So this right here is a much more optimal accumulator CPU. And I'm gonna explain how this works in this episode. But first, we're going to talk about how a accumulator CPU is supposed to work. So up on the screen right now is a little graphic about the layout of this. We have the memory. So the memory, which is going to contain our opcode, is going to give information or the opcode to the IR, which stands for the instruction register. So once the instruction register gets the opcode, it's going to decode it and send it to the control unit and the program counter. So once a control unit gets the opcode, it's going to determine what segments of the computer needs to be turned on in order to perform the specific operation at hand. And then the program counter is going to get the opcode and know which program it needs to jump to and which program to execute. Yeah, pretty much that's it. So it goes to the instruction register and then, you know, gets decoded into whatever. And then it also sends some of its data to the ALU. And then once it's in the ALU, it can subtract, add, whatever it needs to do. And then the main way that this computer works is this register called the accumulator. So the accumulator takes the output of the ALU and then it, it gives it to another output to display its data or it feeds it back into ALU to compute even more. And this is the whole design of the computer. So now let's look at my actual one and we can see how this diagram is turned into reality. So I have a little code right here and this computer is a six bit computer. So if you look at the ALU, we have six bits right here. And the reason it's like that is because I'm trying to make a clock out of this and I already made a clock right here out of transistors, but this isn't a programmable computer. It's just a clock. So this is an actual programmable computer that we can program it to be a clock or we can program it to do other stuff. So the program right here is adding one to a number. Then it checks to see if the number equals a, uh, whatever number we want. In this case, I have the number four. So if it equals the number four, we're gonna reset the program after. And that's what it's doing. And in reality, for a clock to work, we would have, if the number equals 59, we wanna reset it. But in this little demo, I have it if it equals four, just so it wouldn't take years for the program to run. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. So let's zoom in. So right here, let's see if I press tab, it works. No, it doesn't work. But right here is the instruction register. So it just comes from the main memory source. And this is our memory source. It's this array of buttons that I like to use. And it allows us to hardwire what we want our opcode to be into the system. So this is non uh, read, this is read only memory you can say. And that's how it would be in real life. If we actually made this, we would use switches to represent this read-only memory. It's, so then it goes to the instruction register. Instruction register feeds directly into the ALU. Then the ALU goes outputs to this accumulator register, which will then circle back into the ALU. And then we have this register right here, which displays the data being written. Control unit allows us to store the accumulator store the instruction register, add, subtract, jump. So this allows a program, gener uh, program counter to jump if the ALU is not outputting or is outputting zero. And this allows the uh, program counter to jump if the ALU does not equal zero. And then this right here allows us to store this register right here. 
And then we go over here, we have the program counter, which very basic. We already covered all of these. So yes, now let's talk about the program. So first thing we're doing is going into add mode, okay? So look, add is three. So we're making the ALU go into add mode. And then if we press this again, now we're storing one into our instruction register. And you might be wondering what this one right here is doing. There's a little glitch in the software and not necessarily my design where you have to have the one on the previous state and on the current state so it could save it correctly or else it just won't save at all. So that's why it's like that. And then next one, we're going to save whatever the ALU is outputting into the accumulator, just like this. And then we're going to display it on this display register. Now we're going to go into subtract mode and we're going into subtract mode we're going to store four into the IR. So then at the output equals zero, in which in this case it does, goes to the control unit. And the next one right here, this would jump only if the control unit, uh, or only if the ALU was not outputting zero. But since the ALU is outputting zero, the control unit's not going to jump. And so we just continue with the code up here. And then up here we have this, which we just store in the accumulator. The accumulator stores zero and we effectively reset. <clears throat> so, and then if we keep going on again, I'll show it this time because now it won't equal zero. So when we go to this command up here, we just jump back to the beginning. You saw that? We just jump back to the beginning without going through the rest of the code. So the ALU doesn't reset and we continue to add one to this previous account. So a definition of a computer that we're gonna use on this channel is called a turning complete computer. And that's exactly what we made right here. So a turning comp um, complete computer must be able to do arithmetic, which we've effectively accomplished with our ALU. It also must be able to do branching instructions. So what does that mean? So branching instructions means that the program counter can jump to other programs instead of just continuously going in order for the whole system. And that's what this zero jump thing does on our program counter. So we can almost make like an if then statement. So if the ALU equals zero, we wanna to jump to X on the program counter. If it doesn't equal zero, we wanna to jump to Y. So that's branching and allows us to make if and then statements, which is also necessary for a true computer. And then another thing on a turning complete computer, if we have infinite memory and infinite bits on our system, we can compute anything that we want. And that's true for this. If this instruction set was in inf like infinity instead of eight, then we can compute whatever we want it might take an infinite amount of time, but we can still compute whatever we wanted to. So that's what classifies as a turning complete computer. And that's exactly what this is. So now let's go over everybody's favorite part. And that's the transistor count, because if I made a computer in real life, it would be this one. It's about 628 transistors. And that's a, that's a pretty good estimate. It's not exactly, but it's a pretty good estimate. And then I'm just gonna go over everything, even though I have a vi video about each individual segment of this computer, I'm just gonna go over briefly everything real quick right here. So program counter, we're using the half adder register system just cause it's a little bit easier to um, do, do a jump command with it instead of JK flip flops, but it still can be done with JK flip flops. And it's also easier to make this with bare transistors instead of JK flip-flops with transistors, which I'll have a video about how to make that a little later on. This is just a simple decoder, you know, very basic. Um, this right here is a whole bunch of tri-state buffers. So we don't have corrupt data on this bus. Right here, we have a, just a little register system, ALU. 
with our um, full adders subtract system and a little system at the end so we can know whether or not it is zero. And then this right here is a little SR latch, you can say. So if we have add, it's constantly on add mode. And then if we have subtract high, it's constantly on subtract mode. And we don't need to hold that value high for in order for it to work. Control unit is just another um, decoder. And then the registers and the output right here. So we don't have a GPU for this. And this is it. Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say in this video. Uh, come back next week or I might start posting a little more consistently. And we're going to talk about different computer designs. But I'd say we've mastered the accumulator CPU design. Thank you for watching this. Please subscribe. We're very close to 1K subscribers, which is a huge milestone for any YouTuber. And it's going to allow me to make more of these videos more full time. But... Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for picking this instead of some other brain rot content out there in the universe. And enjoy the rest of your day.